Two homes have exploded in just the past week, one in Germany and one in Austria. The cause? Home battery energy storage systems. But why are we seeing more of these incidents? Just last week in Austria, a 34-year-old man was severely injured when a battery pack exploded inside his home. He had been trying to repurpose used Tesla battery modules to build his own home energy storage system to supplement his solar setup. And honestly, this type of setup scares the crap out of me, just because it's something that shouldn't be done. Look, I love a good DIY project. I'm an engineer. I like to tinker. I get the appeal of building something like this. But from a fire and battery safety side, absolutely not. This is one of those things that has to be designed, validated, and tested properly. When you're dealing with energy storage, it's not just about making it work. It's about ensuring that if it does fail, when it does fail, it fails safely. One of the biggest problems with a DIY battery setup is it lacks a proper battery management system, BMS. A good BMS is designed to detect faults, shut down charging if temperatures get too high, and prevent thermal runaway before it starts. Without that protection, a single bad cell can take down an entire system. And that's exactly why repurposing an EV battery is so risky. And I fully understand that these do-it-yourself systems do include a third-party BMS. At least they should. Unfortunately, they aren't designed specifically for the batteries they're being paired with. EV battery modules are engineered to work with a highly sophisticated manufacturer-specific BMS system that monitors the cells and communicates with the entire vehicle's system. A third-party BMS, no matter how advanced, was never designed for that exact pack or those exact battery modules, meaning it may not detect early warning signs of failure, leaving users with a false sense of security. And that's the important part right there, that false sense of security. And here's what many people don't realize. There are two major hazards when it comes to battery fires. First, there's a risk of fire, which can often be managed. But on the other side, there's a risk of flammable gas release, which can lead to a devastating explosion that has major consequences. And that's exactly what happened here. The Tesla battery modules he was using appear to be from an older pack likely containing about 450 individual 18650 cells. When he was working on one of the modules, it started smoking, and he tried to move it outside to prevent further damage. But before he could get it out, the battery exploded with enough force to rip the terrace door from the frame and throw it into the garden. He suffered severe burns and had to be airlifted to the hospital, where he underwent emergency surgery and after was admitted to the ICU. This is a perfect example of why even if a battery looks fine on the outside, it can still be an extreme hazard. Once thermal runaway starts, you don't want to be anywhere near it. But here's the thing. This isn't just a problem with home-built systems. Even commercially available energy storage systems can have serious issues, as we've seen in multiple recent incidents. In Schoenberg, Germany, there was a massive explosion in a home equipped with a battery energy storage system. The house was severely damaged with the entire exterior wall blown off. Fortunately, nobody was home at the time of the explosion, but the structure is now beyond repair. Investigators have identified the failed unit as an LG RESU battery, which appears to be NMC chemistry, and that system was about 5 years old. It seems the system has a storage capacity of about 10 kilowatt hours. If that's the case, it could have released up to 5,000 liters of gas during the failure. That much gas igniting in an enclosed space explains the devastating destruction. The home will likely need to be completely torn down due to the extent of the structural damage. The sheer force of the explosion highlights just how dangerous these failures can be, especially when energy storage systems are installed in confined spaces with little to no ventilation. But this isn't an isolated case. In fact, residential battery storage systems are becoming a bigger issue. This explosion in Germany is just the latest in a series of battery storage system failures over the last few years. There have been multiple incidents several which have resulted in fires or explosions, many occurring in closed spaces where the deflagration hazard is extreme. I often hear people say, LFP, that's going to save the day. Well, not exactly, because LFP batteries can still fail, and when they do, it's catastrophic. Another battery energy storage system exploded in Germany. The blast damaged an entire room, and the home was deemed uninhabitable. This was reported as a lithium iron phosphate battery, LFP, with right around a capacity of 30 kilowatt hours. While LFP batteries are generally considered more stable than NMC-based chemistry, this explosion proves that they're not immune to catastrophic failures. 
What most people don't realize is that when an NMC battery fails, about 20% of the gas is being released, that's hydrogen. LFP, on the other hand, releases about 50% of the gases as hydrogen, making it far more explosive under the right conditions. So while LFP may reduce the fire risk compared to NMC, the potential for a devastating explosion, that is far higher. That's because, again, there's way more hydrogen being released. One major concern with these incidents is where these batteries are being installed. Many homeowners are placing them in basements, garages, or utility rooms, in closed spaces with little to no ventilation. If a thermal runaway event occurs, flammable gases like hydrogen can accumulate, and if ignited, they don't just start a fire, they create a deflagration, an explosion. Part of the problem is that some battery manufacturers actually recommend indoor installations. Cold temperatures can reduce battery efficiency and lifespan, so companies often suggest keeping them in basements or insulated areas. This might help performance, but from a safety standpoint, it's a disaster. I'd love to see a requirement that these systems only be installed outside. That's typically what we see in areas with a mild climate, but that's not practical. In colder regions, these units are often installed indoors to protect them from extreme temperatures. The garage is the next best option, but when you think about it, a garage door actually works as a really good deflagration panel, releasing the pressure and limiting structural damage to the building. But here's the problem. When the fire department arrives, thinking they have a typical garage fire, the first thing they'll do is cut that door open. And what do you think happens next? The accumulation of gases gets an ignition source, and suddenly, those firefighters are standing in front of a large panel that's coming right at them. This is a major problem because most residential energy battery storage systems aren't designed with adequate gas venting. They're often treated like simple appliances rather than the hazardous energy storage devices that they actually are. And the real issue here, these systems are becoming more common and the safety regulations are barely keeping up. We're seeing dangerous failures, but we're also seeing the same mistakes repeated over and over again. And without changes to how these systems are installed, vented, and regulated, we have the potential to see an even worse incident. So what do you think should change? Should these battery storage units be allowed in homes at all? Or is it time for major changes?